Now at 10 o'clock, state leaders continue to work on a Medicaid expansion bill. The latest group calling on lawmakers to expand Medicaid straight ahead. Plus, nationally recognized authors spent some time at Southern Miss today for the Children's Book Festival. We'll have details from the event coming up. And the weather has been uh, much nicer later this afternoon now that the clouds have uh, moved off towards the east. How long will we stay sunny? We'll talk about it coming up. But your news at 10 starts right now. Tonight, WDAM 7 News is proud to be on your side with WDAM 7 News at 10. Welcome in. Thanks for being here. I'm Michael Clark. Today, the Senate passed a bill that provides an additional $206 million for education funding and $50 million for teacher pay raises. But nothing is final. According to Lieutenant Governor Delbert Hoseman, the bill would give teachers with a bachelor's degree a starting pay of $42,000. But the move comes after the House revived the INSPIRE Act. So we'll have to continue to keep you updated as lawmakers iron out the details of funding education. Medicaid expansion, two words you've heard a lot about this legislative session. Faith-based leaders gathered at the state capitol today urging lawmakers to pass legislation related to the issue. Quentin Smith has all the details for us tonight. Let's do the most good for the most people by expanding Medicaid. It's a simple but yet passionate plea. We say we care about our sick. We care about the poor. We care about the most vulnerable. So it is our moral obligation to care for them. And we feel like full expansion is the best way to do that. Calling for lawmakers to reach a compromise and pass a bill to expand Medicaid to thousands of working Mississippians. It's helpful insurance, not hindered insurance. It's real insurance that ensures that people get the help that they need. When it comes to Medicaid expansion, right now, it's a stalemate. The House and Senate butting heads on the details they want to include in their respective bills. For example, the Senate's version would impact roughly 80,000 people. It expands Medicaid for those between the ages of 19 and 64 years old who make just over $15,000 a year. Also, there's a 30-hour work week requirement. However, when it comes to the House's version, it would impact roughly 200,000 people. Those who are between 19 and 64 years old, making just over $20,000 a year, would be eligible to receive Medicaid. There's also a 20-hour work week requirement under this bill. Let's stand up. We have the opportunity to do something that changes, once again, this state significantly. That brings a great deal of equity to all of our people and particularly working class folks. Let's expand Medicaid fully. When it comes down to the two, faith-based leaders say they believe the House's version would be the better option. The economics are on our side about full expansion. Uh, the hospital administrators say that expanding fully is best for the hospitals, the reimbursement rates better for the hospitals, uh, it gives people better access to full health coverage. That was Quentin Smith reporting for us tonight. And since both chambers are at a stalemate, a conference committee is now being formed. A three member committee from the House and the Senate will come together to try and hammer out an agreement on the specifics of the legislation. Right now, still no word on when that committee will meet, but we do know the meetings will be open to the public. A fire at an elementary school in Bolivar County this morning is under investigation by the state fire marshal's office. The Cleveland School District reports all children at Hayes Cooper Center are okay. Two staff members were hurt and went to the hospital for treatment. The school will not open tomorrow. A two vehicle crash involving a pedal school bus is under investigation in Jones County. Thank goodness no children were on board when it happened on Augusta Road near Ellisville this morning. The driver was not hurt and was on the way to begin the morning route. Pedal school leaders say there was only minor damage to the bus there. A former William Carey athlete was sentenced this week for his role in an overseas fraud scheme. That's according to the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Southern District of Mississippi. 24-year-old Ani Kemi Etim, along with five others, were receiving funds from various schemes and transferring the money overseas. Investigators say that happened between 2018 and 2022. Now, along with a sentence of three years of probation, Etim was ordered to pay a nearly $75,000 fine and more than $123,000 in restitution. He is originally from Nigeria and was a track and field athlete at William Carey while he was scheming people, according to a news release sent out. 
Three of the five people involved were on the track and field team at William Carey. The athletes received funds from more than 100 victims and transferred a total of $820,000 overseas. All right, now let's toss things back over to Patrick. We had a lot of wind and clouds this morning, eventually clearing out, and the sun finally came back. Yeah, the sun finally uh, did return later this afternoon. It was kind of a it was kind of dreary, kind of misty, very uh, cloudy start, but it was very nice as we ended the day. Currently 56 degrees out at Summerall right now. This right here is a live look at the uh, Express Care Summerall Sky Cam. Not much happening out there for tonight. Temperatures are sitting into the 60s, uh, 50s, excuse me, here across the area. It's currently, uh, well, there's the almanac. 72 is the high, and the winds are calming down. That's some good news there. It's currently 61 in the Hub City, but it's 59 out at Petal, 55 in Ellis. 54 in Waynesboro and 58 out towards Columbia and Foxworth. Tomorrow morning when you wake up, the kiddos will need a jacket, a light jacket at the very least. Uh, temperatures will start off into the upper 40s, but watch into the afternoon. A nice warm up mid 70s for the second half of your day. We're going to take a full look at that forecast coming up here in just a few minutes. All right, Patrick, thanks. We'll check back with you soon. Tonight, emergency leaders are reporting a second death from this week's storms in Mississippi. At least three tornadoes have been confirmed by the National Weather Service. Six people were hurt and dozens of homes were damaged in 11 counties. 64 year old Shirley Wilson died of natural causes in Scott County when she lost power at her home, which in turn shut off the oxygen she depended on. A nurse also drowned in flash floodwaters just outside of Greenwood in LaFleur County. 43-year-old Shanika Newton was driving home from work late last night when her car got submerged. According to investigators, five people were injured in Scott County and one injury was reported in Grenada. Back here closer to home, the city of Hattiesburg wants to hear from you when it comes to safety on city roads. There's an opportunity for in-person sit-downs with city leaders to share feedback. The first of the four meetings will be at 6 p.m. next Wednesday at the Jackie Dole Sherrill Community Center. There will also be meetings held at local universities within the next few weeks. We've got a full schedule of those meetings right now on our website. Noted authors and illustrators from across the country received honors today at Southern Miss as part of the annual Faye B. Kegler Children's Book Festival. New York Times best-selling so author Jenny Cynthia Lytick-Smith received the Southern Miss Medallion. That's the festival's top award. A half dozen other new authors and illustrators took home honors from the Ezra Jack Keats Foundation. Those awards have been presented at USM for the last 13 years now. It's huge that these authors and illustrators come to our town, come to Hattiesburg to see us and speak to us. I mean, I can't think of anything else in the region that draws authors and illustrators like this. And we're really proud to be able to host them and show them hospitality and really make them feel welcome here. Well, the festival is going to wrap up tomorrow. The first one was held back in 1968. A lot more to talk about at 10 o'clock. A Hattiesburg firefighter is being recognized for saving a man from a burning building. We'll have that story next.